Beauties, this is Sarah from SheHoldsDearly.com and today I am going to share with you the tour of our Christmas bedroom in our farmhouse. This is the first time I've ever done this. I put a lot of thought into this, a lot of ordering and styling and even when I had everything all collected and knew like exactly what I wanted to do, it still took me four hours to set up. But I'm so happy I did. The kids keep coming in and looking around and going, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. And so I'm excited to share with you what we, what we have going on this year. And I really went for a very muted, soft, um, sort of cozy French look. My thought was just that I wanted it to feel really restful for us and warm and soft and like we just mentally could relax in here. So no red in this room. And um, let me just show you around and I'll show you what I did. I, I broke the room into the five zones that I normally work in when I um, talk about this room. There's five main areas. And I tell you that just so that you yourself can think along those lines when you're decorating a room. You want to hone in, especially on like the task that, that the area in a room is dictating. So we have two office areas in this room. We have one armoire area, we have the mantle area, and we have our bed. So I focused on those five different areas and I'm going to just get, throw out some tips that you can do to tweak a few things in your house and suddenly it feels like it's decorated for Christmas. So first of all, let's look at the office spaces because they are the simplest. I went ahead for my, my husband's office space. I just took out the fern that was previously on the desk and I put in an, an old style galvanized bucket with a rope handle and a little tree that I got at Target for $5. And then last year I made a pom-pom garland. I just hot glued pom-poms onto a ribbon. And so I just um, just draped that really loosely over the top of his artwork over his computer. And that was it. So there's two tips for switching out your decorations. One is to replace your regular plants with Christmas trees or something more Christmassy looking like paper white flowers or something. And then if I can, if I'm switching out an old piece of decoration, I actually put it right into my Christmas bin. And so I'm emptying it out and filling it at the same time. And then it's just like a no brainer. It's all kept together. And then when I put my Christmas stuff away, it can come back out. So that's a, that's a good storage tip. And then I do think that switching out somehow, switching out your artwork a little bit on the walls, your wall decorations, really has big impact. Even if it's just hanging a simple garland over a picture. Okay, so same thing for my desk. I simply removed, I have, normally have a fern wreath up above my desk. I put that in the bin and I put up a little wreath that I made. It was in one of my um, thrifted, styling your thrifted decorations videos. I took an olive branch and I made it into a wreath and I just hot glued the little pine cones on it. So I hung that in place of the previous wreath and added a little white, white satin ribbon and put a candle on my desk and that's done. Okay, so those were the two easiest spaces. Then let's move on to a little bit more like intermediate level decorating, the armoire area. So I left my two green chairs up because I felt like they were Christmassy enough. And I have, I just did a video on recovering those. So you can check that out if you want. But um, then I decided that the top of the armoire, there's a basket up there that I keep our linens in. I decided to fill it with antlers. And my thought was it kind of just feels kind of reindeer-ish, not a word, but I just really liked how subtle it was, but it was just like a touch of, like a hint of Christmas going on there. And then I put this vintage dress with the gray bow. I hung that on the front of it. This dress belonged to a baby girl that we lost a few years ago. And so I um, will probably always keep this dress and pull it out for the Christmas decorations. Just looks like a little girl's party dress and then it's totally sentimental. So that's what that is. 
And then moving over to the mantle, I had a lot of fun with the mantle. This is gonna be following on my previous tip about changing out your artwork. So this, this picture up here, if you remember from my bedroom reveal that I did just a few weeks ago, I have this painting on top of the mantle, but it's a painting of mountains. And I thought, I'm gonna switch that out every, um, every season maybe. And it's not something that you can just pull out. There's no glass on it or anything. And so I ordered a $5 painting, printable painting off of Etsy. I had it printed at Office Max. I think it was just five, maybe five more dollars or something like that. And then I had them print it to the right size and they cut it for me and everything. And I literally just set it in the frame. That's it. It's not like held in place or anything. I thought I might have to tape it, but it's staying fine. So it looks like a whole nother painting. <laughs> I love it. So that's another tip that you can do to switch out your artwork is get a $5 painting off Etsy and switch out some artwork. Then my cloches I normally keep here, but I went ahead and added some little cream colored bottle brush trees. And then there's this crazy like macaroni tree that is so funny to me. It's from my childhood. I remember it distinctly from when I was little. And my mom, I think my mom made it. <laughs> I don't know, was that a 70s thing that you like paint glue noodles on things and then spray paint them? I don't know, but I just love it. Every year I pull it out and it just makes me smile. <laughs> so that's up there and I love that it's cream colored like the bottle brush trees. I then added um, a couple stockings for my husband and I. And actually these were um, a green color that I didn't like and I ended up bleaching them and it turned out nice and creamy. And so I was able to continue to use them. And then I just added in some of this frosty, like sagey color green garland. Okay, so pretty simple, but it's soft and I just really love it. So now tip number three. If you can squeeze a tree into your bedroom, it is so dreamy to sleep by tree light. So I'm super excited actually tonight to sleep with the candles on and I, oh, let me share my favorite thing this year. Each year I, I invest in getting a few more decorations and this is my favorite. I, for the last few years, have done really kind of a Scandinavian look with my trees and haven't used any ornaments. But this year I'm really loving the candles. And I actually, that's, that's my prediction is that the whole like clip on candles are gonna become really trendy. So you heard it here first. But I looked at several ones. There's some super cheesy ones on Amazon that I ended up returning. And then I found these and they weren't totally cheap, not dirt cheap, but for me it was worth it because they're just so gorgeous. And they are made with wax. Like you, they feel like wax. And you simply slide a double A battery up into shaft of the candle. You twist it on, it comes on, and then you, you easily just clip them onto the branches. So no cords, right? And you can adjust the candle to um, get at the angle you want it at. And then you can address, adjust the wick. And then it comes with a remote and you turn it on and the little lights flicker. And oh my gosh, it's like the perfect perfect little Christmas thing to indulge in. So I'm passing that on to you because I'm totally excited about it. And I'll also link the tree. This is my tree. I've got a couple of these trees that I get at Walmart and I love how real they look. I love that there's like a two-tone green going on of these sage like fluffy tips. It's a spruce tree. And so anyway, I will link that for you. Hopefully they still have it this year, but I have those for my trees. I don't buy a fresh tree anymore. And then I just simply clipped on my candles and we're ready to go. Tip number four, throw some creamy colored textured knit throw blankets around. So I've got one on the chair I'm sitting on. I've got a beautiful blanket on my bed that has crocheted on it, which to me, like I love crocheted year round, right? But at Christmas, it's even better because it's like snowflakes. That's what I think of when I look at crocheted things, especially in the winter. So that is a really pretty touch to bring in anything knit, anything crocheted. And then 
Tip number five, if you have a chandelier in any of your rooms, this is the time to start dressing it up. And it, the first time I like tucked in all the little picks and things, I was getting, it just got like too perfect and too full and just kind of gaudy. And so I took like half of it out. But so I have evergreens with some little pine cones. I have then some of this sagey, um, velvety leaves, the different color of green. I like to use like three different types of greenery when I'm putting a look together, especially at Christmas. And then I have some smaller leaves that have like a uh, white glitter on them. So it all came together. It's just the right touch and you can still see my, my crystals hanging down a little bit. So that was fun. Then on my nightstand, I switched out my bouquet of flowers. I actually moved it over to one of the green chairs. You can kind of do that, do a little juggling and not actually have to store all of your regular decorations. But on my own nightstand, I added a matching tree that's on my husband's desk and a candle. So super sweet, just tiny little switches, but it takes it into the Christmas mode, right? And okay, so tip number six, and this is specifically for a bedroom. Now is the time to switch out your sheets if you can. And we got some new gray plaid flannel sheets in, just something simple. It doesn't need to dominate the room, it just needs to coordinate, okay? So I got some Laura Ashley, just simple plaid gray sheets, just to make it super cozy. And if you've been around a while, you know I love my white sheets, but for the next few weeks, they're gonna be plaid flannel sheets. And I took my, my white sheets that I normally would have used, been using, and I actually just used them to go around the base of my Christmas tree so it looks like snow. So that's another little tip. And then number seven would be to grab a couple of these, co these pillow covers. I believe they're two for $15, which is like outrageously cheap. That's fantastic. They're velvet. I love the 20 by 20. That's my standard like medium sized pillow. They're velvet and they have the pom-poms, which again, just screams like Christmas time, snow, snow ball fights, you know, all that. So I highly recommend getting a little set of those pillows and just popping those in different rooms and you have like instant Christmas festivity. I didn't say this earlier, so I'm just gonna say it now, but as I was putting the chandelier wreath garland stuff together, little pieces kept falling off. And instead of trying to stick those in there and then have them fall on you when you're asleep or something, um, or throw them away, hang on to these and use them on your gift wrap. And so you just tie it, you know, as you tie a bow, stick your little scraps in there and that is, such a sweet touch. I'm actually going to be doing a video 
and a blog post soon on, on great styling techniques for wrapping gifts. So I'm super excited to get going on that. My stuff just arrived yesterday and I was like, oh yeah, this is gonna be good. All right, so that's it for the bedroom. Super soft, cozy, like I'm just super, I'm excited to just snuggle up on these cold nights and have a Christmas room for really the first time in my life. I'm so excited about that. So there are three more rooms coming up that I am also excited to share with you. This one is done. And if you haven't already gotten a hold of my 10 steps for a peaceful Christmas, I will link that below for you. Um, just It's just things I've learned over the year to push back on the crazy and make sure that it's actually an enjoyable time of year and just some hacks that I've found. So you can grab a copy of that if you would like. And other than that, thank you so much for stopping by and watching this whole video. If you're new here, please consider hitting that subscribe button. I do post regularly, usually on a Tuesday and a Friday, and I share my professional design advice for the DIY home life. All right, take care. I'll talk to you soon.